Hey therapist, are you tired of feeling chained to your chair, believing that the only way for you to earn income is through one-on-one -on -one sessions? Imagine if you could increase your freedom, your flexibility, and your income without sacrificing what you love. I have a solution for you. It begins with joining the Course Creator Hub. This is a free community where you can interact with other course creators, other experts, learn from each other, support each other, build some accountability, and have access to me and some of my handouts that I make frequently. So I'm inviting you to join me in the Course Creator Hub. I'd, I'd love to interact with you and support you on your mission. Go to courses.coursecreatorstudio.com backslash store for your free access today. I can't wait to meet you inside. Join today. Hello and welcome to the Scaling Therapy Practice. This is your host, James Marland. This is the show where we empower mission-driven leaders to launch life-changing online courses. Today, I have a special guest with me, Deborah Russell. She's an MBA and an elite certified business coach. She, she is a keynote speaker and a professional development trainer. Uh, I have met her in, my, in, in the journeys of doing online courses. And I thought she had a wonderful story to share about her journey, where she's going and where she wants to take people. So I brought her on the show. Deborah, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So Deborah, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into, the, into how you started doing courses. Well, I have had, James, a long and winding and bizarre road. Um, I started actually in theater um, and television and film as an actress first and then in production. Um, I have a BFA in theater in addition to my more recent MBA. And I was working my way up to being a producer director, which was my ultimate mm. goal. And I got sick and I was very, very sick for a very long time. I was bedridden for three years, housebound for about 10. So, um, I knew I could never go back to film, uh, because working as a producer director, working in film production is a 17 hour a day seven day a week job uh it sounds like it it was a it was a grind and there was an event in your life that happened that kind of brought it to a standstill yeah i actually had a um producer who was ready to produce my first feature as a director um i worked my way up you know i paid my dues and um i got sick literally got sick while we were looking at scripts and making a decision about which script we would go with. Um, and he called me, God bless her. He called me the first Monday of every month for two years. First Monday, I know it was on his calendar. Call Deborah. First Monday of every month for two years. And I finally said to him, Mark, not going to happen. I'm never coming back. And that, that broke my wow. heart. Broke my heart. It's all your I wanted from your the dreams. time I was 12. Yeah. yeah oh. I, it was all I wanted from the time I was 12. So coming out of that, as I started to find things that helped me physically, as I started to rejoin the world and become able to you know, be out of bed and not be completely bedridden. Um, I, you know, I did a lot of different stuff. I was like, what am I supposed to do now? Cause I, that was all I ever mm -hmm. wanted to do. I, I thought I would be doing that until I retired in my seventies. So, um, and then one day coaching found me and that is its own long story. So I, I, I won't go too deeply into that, but coaching really found me and what I discovered in coaching was that it brought together all of my skills in a lot of different areas. Um, I did personal growth workshops in my uh, late teens, early 20s, and I led personal growth workshops in, in live in front of a room in my um, mid-20s to late 20s. 
then I got a BFA. I mean, being in front of a room of people, that's completely natural to me. So when I became a coach, shifting from just being a one-to-one -one coach to doing trainings mm -hmm. and doing workshops and um, speaking engagements, I started speaking four years after I got certified as a coach. I mean, it was just such a natural evolution. Um, I've been a teacher really in one way or another my whole life. So that, you know, going from that, I started a membership in 2008, which I was leading, of course, you know, because of technology. I was doing on the freeconferencecall.com. Right yeah. back in the aughts. And, um, and I did that for eight years. Um, so I developed hundreds of hours of curriculum because I had to come up with a new one hour court class every month for my membership. So I, you know, course creation is just a completely natural evolution out of all of this. And, um, thinking about all the different ways you can deliver that course, those kinds of things. That to me is just technology. That's mm -hmm. just kind of figuring out what's the, the, what's the method, what's the medium in which you're going to deliver. The content is what lives inside of you that you want to share with the world. It sounded like you had a lot, like, uh, one of the things you said in the beginning or just a few minutes ago was like you were building on your strengths. You were building on things that you are already good at, naturally good at, and also you were getting results on it. But a lot of times, and, and I don't know if you would articulate this back, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, but a lot of times there are things that we're good at. We can't make a career or a money, a money out of them. I like, uh, you know, I like watching movies, but nobody's going to listen to me talk about movies or play my video games or collect. I have a collection of collectible cards. I can't make money on that because that's just a hobby. So how did you turn something you like to do and something that you were good at from from just something that people say, oh, how do you do this to like a career? Wait, how did that how did you make that leap? That's an interesting question, because I am a business coach. That's kind of, that's my focus as a coach. And my specialty is working with people who are pursuing their passion as a business. Mm. You might call it a hobby. And you could absolutely make a living out of talking about movies. Yeah, many people do. People, people do it, right? Talking about movies, writing about movies, teaching about movies, right? Many universities yeah. have courses about, you know, the history of film, right? And so, and how, or how does film affect culture and how does culture affect film, right? That's a sociology yeah. course at a university. So that's my specialty is working with people who are so passionate about something that that's really, they do it for free. How do you turn it into a business? So I did it for myself. I mean, you know, really from day one as a coach, I thought about it as a business. Um, I got training the way the uh, training that, was laid out was that you were not allowed to take money as a coach until you'd reached a certain phase in the course. Um, and literally the day I reached that phase, I had four clients. I was, I was thinking about how do I launch this as a business while I was getting certified as a coach. Because my whole life, I've run businesses. This is, you know, as an actress, as a producer, as a, you know, theater manager, as a whatever I was doing, it was always my business. I was not an employee, even when I was. I think um, one of the things you just said there is you, you got a coach. I, I, why do people think they can do it? 
without a coach. Like the highest paid people in the world have coaches. You know, the, yep. the sports people that I admire, you know, Michael Jordan and uh, uh, LeBron James and all those other basketball players, Stephen Curry, they have they have coaches. Like they have people that, that they listen to who might not have the, the great success that they have, but they know how to do the things that they want to do. And I don't know why I resisted getting paying for, for coaching for so long, because I feel like I, I accelerate when I have the coach and, uh, it's just something, I don't know. I don't know why I thought I could do it on my own. Do you have any comments about like coaching? Cause I think that is a key element of turning your, whatever you're doing into accelerating it is getting the right coaching. Oh, I completely agree. And one of the things that I will say is I'm not the right coach for everybody. Everybody isn't the right coach for me. Um, and there are a lot of coaches out there. So finding someone that you really click with and create that rapport is so, so important. Finding someone who actually knows about what you're trying to do. Um, I, I talked to a lot of clients who hired a business coach to coach them in their artist career. But the coach doesn't know anything about what it takes to be successful in the art, which is different than what it takes to be successful in tech from what it takes to be successful as right. a attorney what it take right it's different there are certain commonalities because fundamentally business is business is business there are also things that are very unique to a particular industry or a particular media so um so finding someone who you really click with who you feel like has knowledge that you're lacking feels like has a perspective that's going to help and shift and advance yours, critically important. And you're right. Even, you know, the best of the best will have athletic coaches, right? Tom Brady had yeah. a quarterback coach until he retired. Of course he did. Because you can't see what you can't see. But in our society... Yeah. There's shame around needing help that I think slows the progress of our society. It slows the progress of our individual, like the like each individual, but it also slows the progress of our culture, of our society, of, you know, becoming really the best it can be. Because people don't want to ask for help. Very, very individualistic. And I, I heard somewhere that there is, um, it, it starts really young, like elementary school. You get graded on your, your own test, on your knowledge, on what you know, and you get penalized for asking for help or getting extra resources or asking your neighbor, hey, do you know how to answer this question? And so it's it's built into us. And then I think you you get into, especially entrepreneurship, that is not the way you get ahead. The difference between, you know, person A who has the same amount of talent as person B and person A is successful and person B is not. And the only difference is that person A has access to resources. Yeah. Uh, Who Not How is the book, Benjamin Hardy, and it's from Strategic Coach, uh, Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy, uh, like, who's the best person to do this? And once you figure that out and you, you, you figure out what you're really good at and you do that and you delegate as much as you can and eliminate the other stuff, you're much further ahead, but it's not always you. It's not always, it's not always the CEO or the owner. You're not always the best person to do things. We, we, we don't like to delegate. We don't like to give up control. But once we get over that, I think our businesses get a lot easier to manage. Building yeah. out a team is critically important. And your team needs to be people that are not only doing the things you can't do, 
But even more importantly, doing the things that are not the best use of your time, that are not your core competency. Um, there is a chapter in uh, Jack Canfield's The Success Principles, which I highly recommend, by the way. There are like a handful of books that all my clients must read. One of them is The E-Myth Revisited. And the second one is Jack Canfield's Success Principles. Um, he talks about the 80-20 rule. You know about Pareto Principle? Mm -hmm. That 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. But the Pareto Principle, that 80-20 rule, applies to a ton of different things. Um, and what he talks about is time management. So that 80% of your time should be spent in your core competency, in what you uniquely are good at and what makes your business be its unique excellence. Like what is the core of your business and that only you can do? So good, good stuff here. Uh, getting back to your story, um, do you, so you, you have courses, you have a membership. What were some of the, um, challenges that you overcame as you were developing your, your course or your course offering or your membership? What were some of the, 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 the barriers and how did you overcome some of those? You can pick out one or two that. Early in my career, uh, uh, maybe I'd been a coach for two or three years, I started really thinking about speaking um, because nothing from a marketing perspective, nothing beats standing in front of the, a room as an expert in your business and speaking to a room of your target market. There is no better way to a establish credibility. If you're standing in front of the room and you're not completely horrible, like reading the PowerPoint and hiding your eye, like, you know, really horrible. If you're even halfway decent as a speaker, you have instant credibility because you're in front of the room. And I knew that. And, you know, I was an actress for years and I have no problem being in front of the room. But here's where my imposter syndrome kicked in. What do I have to say that is different than all the other experts on my core competency? Like, how do I, like, who am I right to stand in front of the room and say what I have to say when, you know, I stand on the shoulder of giants? Right. right. Yeah. And so that was a big issue for me. And my coach at the time, who was said, there will be one person in the room for whom your voice and your unique perspective on the issue, well, that's the only way they can hear it. You're the only person who will break through for them. She said, you don't have to do something different. You don't have to do something completely revolutionary. You do not need to be Einstein. You being you, communicating about it the way you uniquely communicate about it, there will be one person in the room for whom this is the perfect time Yours is the perfect voice and perspective, and they will hear you in a way that they've never heard anyone else before. And yeah. to me, that was magic. I just had to be me. I just had to communicate the way I uniquely communicate about the issues that are important to me, about what I discovered from my own unique perspective. And there will be someone, and I have found this to be true. Years and years of speaking in front of groups, large and small, I have found this to be absolutely true. So getting over that imposter syndrome was huge. I would say the membership, the biggest obstacle was coming up with something new 
for eight years times 12. But Why did you do that to yourself? New topic, something new to teach. And, um, and when I ended the membership, I was taking care of my father who had Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. I had literally moved across country and moved in with my parents to be the primary caregiver for my dad while running a full-time business. And I was done. I was burnt out. I could not come up with another class if my life depended on it at that uh -huh. moment. Like I just, I was done. And so I closed the membership. I really, I made it evergreen, but without any marketing, ended up basically shutting down. And um, so that was, you know, just really deciding that it was okay to stop was, was, and just take care of myself and take care of my dad and take care of my mom, that that was enough. Um, and that, that, that was very hard for me um, because I loved my members and I wanted to be there for them. And they got a lot of value out of it. So, I, you know, that was important to me. Um, but it was just more than I could do. And it's one of the things actually that stops me from being a podcast host. Because it's the same you have to show up every week or every month or how twice a month or however many times you've committed to produce this thing that you're producing, you have to show up. And sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. So I like being a podcast guest. I like just showing up and talking. Well, you're, you got great stories. So, uh, yeah, keep at it. All right. So those were very good, uh, good, um, tips. Uh, so what are you, so what are you doing now? Like you're a business coach. So what do you, what are you doing? So I am in the midst of launching a big, probably it's going to end up being a year long program. So there's, you know, different stages of that year long program, which I am calling the ultimate productivity revolution. It sounds comprehensive. What does it include? Well, um, the first two pieces are all about mindset. And I did want to add back to your last question of what I overcame. I really thought, because this is where I came to it, that time management and productivity was about structure. That people were missing structure or their structure wasn't working for them. And it was really about changing structure. And thanks, actually, to the um, course that we were both in, I did a ton of research. I interviewed a lot of people. And what I discovered was that it was not about structure. Yes, do they need structure? Absolutely. But that wasn't the thing that was most problematic. The thing that was most problematic was mindset. So issues like overwhelm, procrastination, perfectionism, prioritization, decision-making, boundary setting, right? All of these kind of mindset and how you engage with the world. It is. And yes, imposter syndrome creeps in there. Um, overcoming fear creeps in there. All of those emotional intelligence things. It's all, but it's mindset, right? The big bucket is mindset. So the first two pieces of the program are really all about mindset and shifting mindset into a place where you can be productive and in the flow with ease. So uh, I'm just writing some things down um, because last, I think the episode that released yesterday was about, um, uh, it was about uh, a demand narrative, I think that's what I called it, uh, or creating a message that connects with people. And so as you were talking, I was writing out like a demand narrative. You might think it's about uh, productivity. You might think it's about structure and discipline, but it's really about having a, a 
a belief system or a productive belief system or a, or you said mindset. I'm just trying to like simplify the words, but it's really about having a system that supports. Well, actually um, I'd, I'd flip that on its head. Mind. It's really about having, oh, well, how would you say it? That, it's about having a mindset that supports your system. A mindset that supports your system. And that is something that people can change because you know the steps to change the mindset. I don't think I have enough willpower to put in a good system. <laughs> like, it's not about willpower, though. It's not about the structure and, like, following the structure. It's actually believing something different. Hey, I can teach you how to do that. This is what I do. You want to you, you wanna come, to a, you wanna come to my course or do you want to learn a little bit more about it? Click my video. And I'll show you, you know, how, my structure and then, oh, you want to know more? Well, guess what? I have this next offer for you. It's either a web, whatever, whatever the next step in the demand right. narrative. At the end yeah, of fun. the demand narrative, you have one thing, an action step for them to do. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, I, I like how you are framing it because it kind of follows that you might think it's about having willpower and having the right structure, but it's really about this mindset and I can teach you how to do that. And I love that, uh, that flow of how it, uh, how it, it comes about. Right. And so first, the first two pieces are mindset. The third piece is structure, your, your calendar, your time management structure and your task management structure, because that's often the piece that gets left out when people talk about time management and productivity. It's also about what task, what's the best use of your time in the limited amount of time you have available. <laughs> then we implement the structure and create the habits that sustain it. And yeah. that gives you mastery over productivity. And that's, that's the ultimate goal of the ultimate productivity revolution is to create my clients, my the people I work with privately, they come out with a level of mastery around productivity that they did not have walking in. The system you create works so that you trust yourself. And this goes back to what you were saying, James, earlier. You trust that you have the willpower and discipline. Because willpower and discipline are important. They do matter. But willpower and discipline is, are mindset issues. They're not structural issues. They're about what you believe about yourself and how important your goals are over what everybody else needs from you. Because we're great at doing what we have to do for other people. We're not great at doing what we have to do for ourselves. Yeah. So I'm going to sum up um, a little bit of what I've learned from this episode, and then I'll give you a chance to tell people where they can find you. One of the things is we all run out of time, whether being too busy or a life crisis or something, time is just this scarce resource. And the sooner we realize we're going to run out of it, the, the easier it'll be. And we'll get to prioritize things. The second thing is Get a coach, you know, even the best people and the best people at what they do have a coach. I loved your advice about be yourself because if you, you know, the, there's only, there's only one you and somebody needs you, somebody needs your message. And if you're trying to be somebody else, they're not going to connect with you and you're not going to connect with them. So be yourself and know that you're going to be the right person for somebody in that room. And then the last thing is we kind of talked around about it is um, you have a business, no, have a life that runs your business, not a business that runs your life. Because yes. that pain point you had, you were talking about it, but if you would have kept on trying to run your business at that point, it, it would have, I'm, this is a hyperbole, but it would have killed you. You would have been miserable and you had to, you had to find something that fit within your life, that you ran it and not your business running you. I think that 
when your business, you're always chasing your business and you're, you're living your life for your business, then that's, that's where dissatisfaction comes in. Even if you kind of like what you're doing, if you just feel like you're a slave to the business, you're going to burn out. So those are some of the things that I learned as we talk uh, from you. Those are some great highlights, James. I'm very excited about that. And you really captured them very well. And that last thing, because of my own personal experience with illness, I very much, I, it doesn't matter if I'm working with an elite athlete or an um, executive C-suite or um, a startup entrepreneur, if you don't, if you lose your health, there you go. It makes it starts making all your decisions for you. You stop right. having choice, and it's avoidable, right? You can choose self care even in the face of chaos. Mm. It's critical, right? All right. So, uh, Deborah, where where can people find you online? Absolutely. So if you can spell my name, you can find me. Um, my website is DebraRussellCoaching.com. And I'm very petite. I know you can't tell from the camera, but I am very petite. So I don't need any O's or H's on that, Debra. It's just D-E-B-R-A and Russell with two F's and two L's, Coaching.com. Coaching. Um, and... I'm in the process, of course, of writing a new ebook that really talks about the mindset of productivity. Um, and so that will be up, I, I believe, before you publish this. This, And so we'll get that. I'll get you that, um, that link as soon as that's up. And then the, the course that I talked about is accessible through a different website, though you can get to this website from the Deborah Russell coaching website um, called risingstarsystems.com because Rising I star specialize com. in working with people who are rising stars. Beautiful. I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show and sharing your heart and your story and the life lessons that you've learned. Uh, I hope other course creators and people um who have a mission or who have, who have something that they want to teach, listen and visit your website. Um, thanks. Th and, and oh, I will put all the links in the show notes, of course, so that people can find them, even if they're like me and can't spell their way out of a paper bag. So, uh, Deborah, Deborah, thank you so much for being on the show. You bet. My pleasure. So this is James Marlin for the Scaling Therapy Practice. It's now time to go put your mission in motion. We'll see you next time.